what is up youtube welcome back to my channel it is your boy d dice and now today what i wanted to go over and review is glass now glass co-starring samuel jackson james mcavoy and bruce willis is the third installment of the unbreakable trilogy which when split came out nobody ever knew that that was part of the unbreakable saga or trilogy and i must say i was entertained but it was still left with some confusion i must say and i look at it as, as far as you know what drew me in with glass was james mcavoy's character kevin who has 24 different multiple personalities you know, stemming from Split. And in this movie, you get to see all 24 personalities come out as Sarah Paulson's, you know, character as the doctor keep turning the light. So you just got to see all his personalities come out as the light keep coming out. You know, even the Beast. I didn't know the Beast would talk because even in Split, the Beast didn't talk. It just, you know, acted as an animal. And I was... If you're looking at Glass, you kind of want to make sure like it's it's a sequel to Unbreakable. Not much action, but more suspenseful. And I can appreciate that because Elijah, Mr. Glass, is a mastermind. Brittle bones, but a powerful mastermind brain. Like he's stupid smart. And I just want to see what his master plan was. So that's what Glass is primarily about. It's just unveiling his master plan and it was good i'm not gonna lie it was really really good because i see that from beginning they're just giving them pumping up with drugs keeping them still not talking keeping them just dull just being there and then later on you see that that's been a front this whole time that he was just waiting for kevin to get captured for uh david dunn to get captured and bring them all in the same facility as him because he always wanted that classic showdown. And with Glass, they didn't expand upon Bruce Willis's character like I kind of wanted to. If he's going to play the titular good guy, the superhero, they only had him in a couple scenes, not much. You know, it was more so James McAvoy, as always, because like I said, that performance is to steal the show performance. I really enjoy that. And you just look at kind of towards the end at the climax when they do fight each other, they don't really fight each other like that. It's just back and forth, you know, pushing and shoving, showing who's stronger than who. And it was more psychological of getting into each of their characters' heads of you're not really a superhero. And that was Sarah Paulson's character to kind of show them like, hey, look, you're not a superhero. But Elijah's, Mr. Glass's character is to show that, hey, you are. Like, you are superheroes and supervillains and you you are greater than the average human being. And his whole master plan was to get all the cameras to show the whole world people like them exist. Job well done. So that's why at the end, he was basically saying, you know, it's an origin story. So hopefully... That left room to say that M. Night Shyamalan's universe can be expanded upon. May more people like them may come out. You know, it's just in different movies. I'm I'm definitely here for that. You know, just showing how Mr. Glass, David Dunn, and the Beast, you know, they all met their demise at the end. But it's just showing that, hey, people like this do exist. And... I like that because at the same time, it's all these superhero movies, you know, it's Sarah Paulson's character as a, as a psychiatrist. It's like, hey, you know, people are suffering from, you know, uh, a rare disease of people thinking that they're superheroes. And I'm just like, hmm, well, all these superhero movies coming out, that could be a plausible disease, which is rare that people are probably thinking that they're Iron Man or Thor or whatever may have you. And I'm like, that's pretty cool. You could play on that. You could really play on that. And you could have the evil, you know, corporation trying to put a stop to all that. So I liked it. 
I'll give Glass a 8 out of 10. Only because, like I said, they didn't expand upon David Dunn's character. And I felt like Mr. Glass only didn't really do so much. He was just kind of still in the, in the beginning of the movie. Probably till midway. You know, he probably, he, he finally started having his plan. And his plan was so quick though. It just, it went so fast after he started talking. It just went real fast, you know? And I was just like, damn, I really wish that it would have kind of got expanded upon as far as his, his elaborate master plan for David Dunn and Kevin to show off for everyone to watch it. But other than that, it is a good movie to check out, especially in January. So if you enjoyed my review of Glass, subscribe to my channel, post a comment down below, and like this video. It is your boy, D. Dyson. Peace.